Okay, so this is part two of um, creating an InDesign um, interactive presentation. Let me get my windows back to where they need to be here. Um, and what we're ready to do here is we are ready to format this, uh, get the image in, and um, I need to then really push this interactivity. Uh, I also might want to see if I can link a video in here. So I'm going to go to File and Place and get this other image in here. Um, there we go. So juicing's caught on a lot lately, so that's um, why I'm doing this. Um, there are a lot of health benefits to it. Uh, can get a little expensive as far as buying the produce, I've learned. But um, you know, if you can get from farm stands and stuff in the spring and summer, that's probably the best way to go. And my uh, website that I use to um, kind of pull this together is um, this website right here. It's um, all about juicing. So I wanted to give credit to um, this uh, website here. Um, the guy named Joe, he um, did a lot of juicing and lost a lot of weight and he's super healthy now. But um, this is where I grabbed everything was from this website. Uh, rebootingwithjoe.com so Joe Cross so hopefully Joe doesn't mind that we're borrowing his things because uh, it'll it links back to him so Joe hope you don't mind if you do let me know um, basically what I need to do now is after I place this second image in and I got it aligned to the grid I want to figure out what I'm gonna do as far as getting this type to not uh, uh, be such a problem. So I'm going to pull this image up and these directions instead of a list like I have here I might um, oh, I might do it in two columns instead of this one column. Um, I'm just going to figure out what I'm going to do here. Maybe I should um, I can't break this text into two columns. It's, it's actually pretty easy. So let me reduce the size of this because it doesn't need to be two really wide columns. And you can click on a type box and in your um, control panel when it's selected, you can actually tell it instead of one column to be uh, two columns. Now the only problem with that is it automatically puts the text that's down below up at the top of the column. So that might not work for us. So I'm going to break that back down to one column. Oops, I just made it three. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. So I'm going to narrow this column. I'm going to turn on my grid here. And again, I might be breaking the grid a little bit. Now we can see that this column has a little plus sign. That plus sign indicates that there's more text. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click and drag over where I want the next items to go. Now, it, the there really wasn't anything. There's probably just a space bar or an extra return or something. So now I'm going to grab this column and I'm going to pull it, that little window shape pull, and um, make, modify that. Okay, and just try to get that to look like um, it's, it look, to look nice. Um, one of the things I also could do is I could reduce the size of the previous next button, but I can't do it just on this page, I have to do it on the whole master page. So I may have to revisit a couple of things here, how I'm working. I may have to take this entire uh, layout, move things up a couple, do the same thing here, just to get stuff to fit. And see if I can work this out. So the last thing I want is a really tight fitting situation like that. I also could reduce the size of the copy, but this is already too small, I think, for an overhead presentation. If it's for uh, something to view on uh, the computer, that's one thing. So uh, we have to be really careful about things getting too small. Let me just move that up a couple, which means I have to move these up a couple. So whatever you do to one thing, you have to do it to the rest. Okay, so I think we're getting the hang of it, though. I think uh, this looks pretty good, and, and it's not too uh, crazy. Uh, let me move 
these websites just out of the way for now. And I want to probably give that a little bit better sense of balance. Okay. So, um, let's talk about some interactivity. Uh, I'm going to grab these websites and put them down uh, below. And I also would like to uh, see if I can embed some video because I've never done that. Um, this just looks really off, so let me put that back down. Um, I have a URL for YouTube right here. Let me just increase these so we can see them. Again, this is Shift and Control on a PC, Shift, Command on a Mac, and then click and drag. Um, I want to see if I can embed this video, Joe's video, within my um, InDesign. Now, I haven't tried this before, so this is uh, going to be a little harder on me than probably what I suspect. But let me go to Window and let me go to Interactive and see if I can get a hyperlink. Um, uh, it doesn't give me any option here to put in a uh, like a mashup uh, for a YouTube video, so I might have to actually go to his YouTube site um, or to his YouTube video. I may have to do a screen capture, which I really didn't want to have to do that, but. That's just the way it is, so if you guys are embedding video, um, we may have to do a screen grab of the video. So, let me escape that. I'm going to turn this down. And I'm going to create a screen grab of some of Joe's video. Wow, he's even lost more weight since this video. So, um, if I increase this fairly large, I can do a screen capture. Now, on the Mac, it's kind of easy. I, on the PC, it's not nearly as easy. On the Mac, you hold down Shift and Command and click on and, and then the number four, and you get this uh, you get this uh, cursor that turns into like a target. Well, I can click and drag over the part of the image that I want to keep, and that will take a picture and throw it on the desktop. A little screenshot. So let me put that into the folder with my other things and I could rename that. I don't know if it'll be a problem having that name that long. Um, the other thing I could have done, I think when that first comes up it has the ability to, um, it has a little play symbol in it. Oh no. I was hoping I could get that play symbol might have to make that. Okay, so let's say we wanted um, people to watch the YouTube video. Um, I can place the image of Joe, his screenshot. It's going to be pretty large, but it's going to be really pixelated because it's uh, low resolution. You know, screen stuff is low resolution, but when I make it much smaller, each of these pixels, right now the effect of pixels on this a screenshot is 72 effective pixels. Now watch what happens when I reduce it down. The effective pixels go up. It's still actually pixeled at 72, but it'll get a little sharper when I reduce it down. This is the cool thing about a Mac and being able to do these cool screen grabs. Okay, so um, let me close that. And I might draw uh, a little triangle. I'll use the polygon tool click out there until it's uh, basically the polygon tool is not a triangle but I can make a triangle if I click on the polygon tool and I click anywhere on the outboard or artboard don't click and drag I can make this a three-sided so many pixel wide by so many pixel wide um, uh, uh, triangle and here it is I don't know what color I'm going to end up with let me hit the W key there it is um, I want to probably uh, make this look like something you would see um, as a play button on a video. Probably should rotate that 90 degrees. If I hold down the shift key and I, well before I hold down the shift key, if I'm next to an image you see the rotation tool pop up, the little arrows. 
and then I held down the shift key and clicked and dragged to get that rotated. So uh, that's going to be my little play button. And I don't know that I can play it right in here. That's the problem. I'll have to, oh, this will probably have to be a hyperlink. And I also um, will create a hyperlink to his website. I'm going to hit the W key because it's getting pretty noisy. And um, I want to just put on here, um, watch Joe's video, okay? This I know is vague, but just trying to get this done. Making that type big, going to swatches, making it white, and I certainly need to spell video properly. And this needs to be Futura. And whatever one I tend to use. In this case, I'm using a lot of uh, extra bold convince. Now, I think that a little bit more type is in order there. And I'm going to again hit the W key to get my grid lines. I want to align everything nicely here. It's not at all. So that looks like... The um, cool thing is, is when you're clicking and dragging something, uh, it oftentimes will put a pink line. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a pink line that pops up in the center of the document. It lets you know, hey, you're on the center. So that's pretty cool. And I um, might even put a stroke on this. Put a bit of a stroke on that of, uh, let's go, I don't know, red maybe. Maybe even a wider stroke. There we go. I just want this to kind of grab people's attention. And um, let me center this text too, by the way. Center that text. There we go. So we're not really embedding video. We are um, trying to get that centered. Just here, we're going to just create a hyperlink. Alright, now I'd rather just play the video right here, but I'm not sure that we can get that done. Uh, you might be able to find some um, uh, demonstrations on YouTube on how to do that. Uh, I would do a search for embedding video uh, in an InDesign interactive PDF. Um, but for now, I'm just going to do a hyperlink. I'm going to group these two together. That way, when somebody clicks on this area, it doesn't matter if they click on the red button or out here, it'll go to that video. So let me group this. And um, I actually should also include this type, because what if they click on the type? So let me group them all. And then I can create what's called a hyperlink. Now the nice thing is I have the website here. I copied it in Microsoft Word document and pasted it in there. So I am highlighting that and I'm copying it so I can paste it into the interactive area. So when I go to Window, Interactive, and I do a hyperlink here, oh, there's media. Maybe that's where we can do video, but I don't know if I have any actual video I've recorded on the... I would have to download some video. So if you actually have recorded video, you can import media here. But in this case, it's going to be a hyperlink because it wants it's going to take it to YouTube. So I'm going to click on Hyperlinks, and I can type in this uh, URL. I don't have to type it in. I can just paste what I have for that video. So that's uh, really nice. And um, I'm going to, that's all there is to it. There's nothing really much to that. And I'll close that. Now, I, again, I should save this. The other thing I want to do is I want to create a hyperlink with his website. Okay? So let me take this text box and I'm going to cut it. And I'll probably go ahead and put that on the front page. And so I'm going to paste that. And I probably don't need it that big. So let me reduce this a bit, holding down Shift and Command. And I don't really want this to look uh, underlined like that. Um, so instead, um, we need to break that. Uh, I need to break that link. I gotta remember how to do that, folks. It's been a while. Um, let's go. Let's see here. 
Uh, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just use that hyperlink. I don't really want to put the website in there. And I'll put uh, some type in here. It says go to Joe's website. Okay. For more, let's make this smaller. I probably should put this near actually at the end. For more recipes, visit and info. Visit Joe, Joe's website. Click here. All right. So um, instead of putting that up here in the front, I'm so indecisive. Let me cut this and let's put it at the bottom, at the very end. That would make sense now, based on what I'm saying. Okay, so we'll move this up. And we will not be seeing this here. We'll move this up. And we want to center it. There we go. And we want to make this colored red, possibly. Maybe I'll outline. I don't usually like to outline type, but it's on that black background. And let me make sure the stroke is set on the outside. Uh, okay, we want to align the stroke on the outside. We don't want it biting away at the type because when you align it towards the inside, it looks really hideous. It does this. So anytime you're stroking, putting a stroke on type, make sure it is set to line outside of the object. Now that particular stroke is just a bit too thick. There we go. So I always tell folks don't stroke your type because they always. Um, do an inline stroke instead of an outline stroke. So just you've got to be careful. Let's also make this optical kerning. And I still think that it's just a little bit big. Okay. Now, we can make this a hyperlink as well. But I'm going to copy and paste. We'll get rid of this box in a second. I'll copy and paste Joe's website into the hyperlink. So I've copied it. I'm going to click on this box, because if somebody clicks here, I want them to go to the website. Let me hit W so you can see what I'm talking about. That. I'm going to go to Window. I'm going to go to Interactive. This is again a hyperlink. And I'm going to paste Joe's website. And there we go. And I'm going to save this. Now, this being the last page of the document, it makes no sense to have the word next here. Now, I don't know if you recall earlier in the first video, but in order to release one object that you want um, that is placed on the master page and you try to click and drag it and delete it, you cannot. You have to hold down Shift and Command or Shift and Control on a PC. Shift and Command or Shift Control and then click and then that releases it. Now I can just hit the delete key and that's gone. Okay. So I think we're ready to um, export or uh, export this as an interactive PDF, and we'll see if it works. So let me save it, and here is what I would do to export it. I would go to File and Export, and I'm going to put it in my folder that I'm using all my files with, and in the format. Instead of using Adobe PDF Print, I would choose Adobe PDF Interactive. Okay? Now I'm going to hit Save. It's going to ask me about all sorts of options. Do you want pages or spreads? Well, we want pages. Do we want to view it after it's exported? Well, sure, we want to test to see if it's worked. Embed page thumbnails? Well, sure, that doesn't seem like any big deal. View fit to page? I do want it to fit into the page. Um, I do want single page layouts. I also want it to open in full screen mode. I want this to just be an in-your-face kind of thing. I don't want a bunch of tools and bars outside. Uh, I do not want to automatically flip pages because this is an interactive thing where the person at the end has all of the control. Page transitions, I really don't have any, but you can. there are all sorts of page transitions. We didn't talk about those. Uh, forms of media, you want to include all of those. And here, um, image handling, 
Um, you could go as low as uh, 72 pixels per inch. Um, let me just do 72 here. The higher the resolution, the less likely your stuff will pixelate, but we'll just try this and see what happens. So we're trying to go with a, a lower uh, file size, but we're trying to do a decent quality. So this is ready to export and test. Now this error just says that there's a, some text that is over the grid. Uh, it doesn't go necessarily off page, so I'm okay with that. I'm, I was breaking the grid a little bit. And this is generating the PDF for interactivity. Now when your uh, viewer opens this, or tries to open it, it will tell them that this is trying to open in full screen mode. You hit yes. Uh, you could also hit remember my choice for, for this document. That way it does it every time. So you hit yes. And here, um, oh excuse me, my, uh, oh shoot, I have a problem because on a Mac, the resolution <laughs> for the monitor is set weird so I could record this. But the next button is down here. Um, if I click on next, it goes to next. If I click on previous, it goes to previous. Um, so I'm actually clicking on the next button. You just can't see. It's just below this edge, and I can't move it up. Uh, here's Joe's uh, website, and it's asking me, do you trust this? So I allow that. It goes right to Joe's video, and I can play it doesn't play through the InDesign document, unfortunately. And if I want to go to Joe's website and click there, again, you want to click Remember This Action for this site um, and hit Allow. And now it's going to Joe's website um, about juicing. So there's a really cool way to have uh, hyperlinks and interactivity in a PDF. Again, that previous button is down here. You just can't see it. I hit Previous. It goes to the previous page. Hit it again, it goes to the previous page. Um, yeah, I, I set this resolution for 1028 by 760, and I probably should have had it a little bit more elongated considering my YouTube view only is um, so many pixels tall. But you guys get the idea. Um, now I'd love to play around with embedding media and video. That would be really cool. It's going to make this file size enormous, though. So for now, just do links. All right, so there's how you do an interactive PDF. I know it may be a little bit more than what you were needing. Oh, I forgot to delete that. But, um, you know, it's always nice to have a little bit more uh, than a little bit less. So hopefully this will help you out. And, um, you know, I know it might have gone a little overboard for some of you. You may not need all this information. There we go, i got to get rid of that. Save it. But hopefully, um, yeah, you'll watch this video on how to do this, and you'll be able to do something that's uh, simple and clean and just has a little um, panache to it, and it works for you. Thanks.